then the meaning comes out of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's your, it's your interaction with the world that creates the meaning. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you have to look at yourself first and find some meaning in yourself. You have to be compassionate with yourself first before you mm-hmm. can compassionate with other people. Hi, I'm Derek Mills. Welcome to the Glow Podcast. We are honored to have Annie Carpenter as a Glow teacher and host of today's episode. She was a guest on our podcast back in September 2021, and that was episode number 23. She's known as a teacher's teacher. Annie has been a committed student of yoga for more than 40 years. Her guest today is Richard Rosen. In 1987, Richard co-founded the Piedmont Yoga Studio in Oakland with Rodney Yee and Claire Finn. They, in addition to a few others during that era, helped bring yoga into the public spotlight in America. Richard is the author of five books about yoga. Annie and Richard dive into a profound discussion about their personal yoga journeys. They explore the importance of choosing the right teacher, the vital role of pranayama, and how their practices have transformed their lives over time. And toward the end, Richard shares a lovely poem that he wrote. Please enjoy this conversation between Annie Carpenter and Richard Rosen. Namaste, yogis. Welcome. Annie Carpenter here, and I am so pleased to have Richard Rosen at my side today for a nice chat. I am completely humbled that you asked me to do the first one. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just I'm just blown away by this. Well, you know, Richard, any and every time I get even a few minutes with you, yeah. uh, I feel I feel inspired. My goodness. I really do. Um, And let's just assume that anyone out there listening really doesn't know much about who Richard Mm -hmm. Rosen is. And so would you mind just saying, here's where I am. You lose half your audience right now. Oh, stop. (laughs) Um, Well, you know, I I thought about this because I I saw the the question. You know, um, I'm 76 years old. That's the main thing in my life, in my mind right now. I just turned 76, which this morning I was thinking about that and I just thought, how in the world did I ever get here? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, um, I was born in New York City mm. and that makes me a lifelong Yankee fan. But we moved to California, my family, when I was about seven or eight. And I've lived in California, thank goodness, all my life, pretty much. And right now I live in Berkeley, even better. <laughs> and um, I've been teaching, well, we're going to get into the yoga stuff in a while I know. Well, when did you start? I started uh, practicing yoga in 1980, uh, back when the dinosaurs still roamed the earth, <laughs> and I've been I've been teaching since full time since 1987. Mm. So we can get into that more if you'd like to do that. Um, well, I just would love for you to say out uh, from the beginning that you're also an amazing writer and you have many books published and <laughs> a few self published in another form. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, five books. That's all. Only, yeah. <laughs> only five, and then the poetry books. The two, well, they're, they're, those are self-published. So those, those don't really count. Those are vanity publications. Uh, those are wonderful books. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll recite the poem for you later if you like. Oh, that'd be lovely. The squirrel one. Gosh, do you have the book here? I, I don't. Um, I Somewhere. don't think I can remember, remember the squirrel altogether. That's okay. Um, okay, so um, uh, clearly. Richard is a man of many talents and and uh, depth, and I would say there's something about Richard that understands how to stay with something over time. <laughs> would you agree? Uh, yeah, well, in mo- in most cases, yes. In, okay, fair enough. Um, and and I'm gonna just say right from the start that to me that's a big piece about yoga is, yeah. is that we. A, learn that skill and and probably need a little bit of that skill even from day one. Consistency, absolutely. Yeah. Practice. Yeah. yeah. This is essential. Abhyasa. Abhyasa. From the same ver- the root as the word asana. As. As and to, abhyasa are the same? Well, the same root. Uh-huh. As to sit or persist in any course for a long time. I love it. Persist. Yeah, persist. Persist in our seats. <laughs> Very good. All right. So um, knowing that we already have this man of depth and talent and inspiration. That's enough of that. Okay, enough. uh, Who who knows how to stay with something. Mm. How do you see that, uh, A, bringing you to yoga, 
helping you stay with yoga, even as your life changes. So Mm -hmm. all the things of being young and playful and having a child, all those things. Well, you have to integrate into your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, if it's separate from your life, then it's it's too easy to let it go. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, to look at it, you just have to say, well, everything I do is yoga. When I, when I, when I go into class, that's a formal, that's a formal practice. But when I, when I go out of class, I'm still practicing yoga in, in certain ways. By the way I sit, the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I interact with people. It, it's, you know, the, there's a book by Sri Aurobindo. I'm not sure that many people are uh, familiar with it. It's called The Synthesis, Synthesis of Yoga. Synthesis. Synthesis. <laughs> and the, 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 epi, the, epi tap, the epigraph to that book is All Life is Yoga. Mm. And that's what I, you know, that's, that's how I, that's how I, that's how I practice my, 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 that's how I look at my practice. So the poses, the breath technique, the quality of the daily meditation. Yeah. Great. And the reason we do all that is so that our lives are. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Directed or. Well, yeah, as our lives are, uh, are full. That I think that's the whole point of yoga nowadays is, is to live your life to the fullest and, mm. and, 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 um, uh, and, and bring as much, bring as much help us help help the world as much as you can in your own in your own way mm. yay yeah yeah mm. you know that i do know that <laughs> i'm doing my best yeah yeah it's so interesting a friend of mine uh has recently retired from a, a wonderful job she was a guidance counselor at a high school and she is uh i'm gonna use the word lost she says i just don't have meaning now yeah it's hard People give up their long-time jobs like that, and they're sort of thrown out in, into the cold, and they don't know what to do with themselves. I feel like we, as yogis, because of at least the attempt to integrate the practice, the practices in our lives, that uh, well, one day it would be nice to teach a little less. <laughs> I think you agree, um, but somehow I don't think that. Oh my God, well, there's no meaning. Oh, there's plenty of meaning but, in life yes. if, you, if you look around for it. Yes, and I think the practice asks, that's what a, what the practice asks us to do in, in some degree. Then the meaning comes out of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, your, it's your interaction with the world that creates the meaning. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you have to look at yourself first and find some meaning in yourself. You have to be, you have to be, you have to be, you have to be compassionate with yourself first before you're mm-hmm. compassionate with other people. It's hard to do for a lot of people to be compassionate with compassionate, themselves. Compassionate, loving, yeah, patient. Yeah. You have to appreciate yourself. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. <laughs> been there yeah yeah so let's um let's talk about some of your early teachers and i'm, I'm thinking yoga teachers but maybe there's a, a a non-yoga teacher who is evenly inspiring well um my teachers hmm. i think the first prop the first one was a, a, the dearly departed Donald moyer hmm. who died a few a couple of years ago maybe and unfortunately he was, he was fairly young still he was a wonderful man a very 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 he was very intelligent in, in many different areas, and he, he loved Shakespeare, so we had something to talk about all the time. Uh, the next one after that would be uh, Manus Manos, who was my main teacher when I was taking teacher training at, at the Iger Institute in San Francisco. And I don't know exactly what to say about Manuso, but he was he was a very powerful teacher. He had a very strong influence on my on my teaching at first, which was a mixed bag. Um, you know, Manuso's Manuso, and I'm me, and I. I, I want to be like Mike, if you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and it didn't it didn't really work out that well. Mm-hmm. So, um, but he had a really strong influence on the way I I, I looked at yoga. But probably the greatest influence was Ramanand Patel, mm-hmm. um, and he really he, he's he's he just he's he's like a I can't I don't know what the word is. He, he, new things just keep coming up with him. If you stick with him, mm-hmm. sometimes it's a little bit. I don't think he's listening. Sometimes it's a little bit. <laughs> When he when he gets off on Republicans, that's that's really hard, to, really hard to stay with. But if you go consistently, you'll get you get the you get the real the meat of the practice. Mm-hmm. Unless you're vegetarian, then you get the you tofu. Get, yeah, the tofu. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have studied with all three of those, and if those of you who don't know, they're all three committed Iyengar teachers. Absolutely. And yet, you don't call what you do. I am. No, uh, I, you know, W. C. Field said he wouldn't belong to any club that would take him in. <laughs> so um, I, I, I thought about it for a while, but I, I don't like. I, I, I didn't feel like I wanted to. Um, I, I've never been able to um, toe the line, I guess. And once once you commit to being an Iyengar, an Iyengar teacher, and you take the test, and you be, you, you get certified. 
you're sort of, I don't know if the right word is locked in, but you have to do things in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I, I just didn't, I just didn't really want to, oh, one more teacher I should mention at the, at the end here, my good friend, Rodney Yee. I learned a lot from Rodney mm. over the years. We've been, we've been friends now for 40 years. Just want to put that in. Mm. Um, but, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, um, the older Iron Guard people fell away from that practice after a while because they had, it, it's good to follow it initially when, you, when you're still learning about yoga. But when you start to find your own voice and you have your own practice, then you might not want to, you know, toe the line quite as much as, as, as they want you to. And, and I don't know, I don't know anything about the Iron Guard system in, today. I'm not, I'm not close to any of the Iron Guard teachers, but in the old days, you either toe the line or you're excommunicated, you know, and you, you really had, you really had to stay with it and, and do the, the approved way of, of doing things. And you wanted to be able to sort of grow and shift and change and yeah, I mean, yeah, and I, be I you. <laughs> Eventually, but you know, you, I mean, you know, when you when you first start teaching yoga, you, you teach like your teacher. Mm-hmm. You hear your teacher in, in, in the back of your head, mm-hmm. and the, the words come out the same, and the, the, the expressions. And I still, you know, I'm sure you still do mm-hmm. every now and then. That's it. That's a Donald Moyer thing. <laughs> and things like that come out. But you know, after a while, you. Um, you have something that you have something of yourself to give to, to, to the to the students, and you, you know you, you owe it to yourself actually to, to do that. So you know I, I never really became an, uh, a certified Iyengar teacher, although all of my training, all of my teachers, everything has been Iyengar. I mean, very rarely do I go outside and and, and sample other 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 styles. Hmm. That's so interesting because, as you know, I started with Sachinananda and moved on to Iyengar yeah. and on to Ashtanga yeah. and the, what I teach now is some mix of the of the three. Um, and somehow you were able to get everything you needed from this one system. The system always appealed to me because it's very it's very logical in a certain way. Yes indeed. And it's very precise. And I really I really enjoyed that about the practice because mm-hmm. you really had to you know you, you, you couldn't be sloppy when you were in Iyengar class. You get slapped. <laughs> <laughs> you had to really pay attention to what you were doing and, mm-hmm. and really, really feel every little aspect of, of the practice, mm-hmm. which is, you know, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees when you're doing that, you know, move your little toe to the right a little bit more or something like that. But um, in, in general, I really enjoyed the, the, the um, I guess the word is strictness or the, the uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but you, you really had to pay attention to what you were doing. Mm-hmm. And that really appealed to me. It's precise, precise it's direct, yeah, it's clear. Word. Yeah, exactly. It's, there's yeah. consistency yeah, yeah, in it, yeah. which we love and maybe don't love all the time. It was, you know, when I first started taking uh, yoga classes in, in the in the eighties, you didn't have a choice in the Bay Area. You were you went to Nyingar School, or that was it. Mm. There was there was one yoga school in the East Bay, mm. in Berkeley, in the yoga room, and there may have been another one too. I don't recall, but there was an Integral Yoga Institute on Market Street in the city. Is that I, right? I went there in the late seventies. Uh huh. Well, then I missed that one, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In, in in the East Bay, yeah. Oakland, Berkeley, whatever, it was it was a yoga room. That yeah. was that was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I love how things evolve and how we uh, or explode or explode, but but how somehow most of us, I think you and I are the same this way. We like having um, a container boundaries yeah, exactly that are close enough that we feel when we're going off the rails a little bit yeah. so that it heightens our attention. Yeah. And sometimes the choice is to come back and toe the line. And sometimes the choice is, oh, maybe this line needs to veer a tiny bit leftward yeah, 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 today yeah, yeah. or for a while. But you do it because they have a reason to do it. Exactly. Yeah. But if we didn't have that edge that we were bouncing against, I don't think the, the awareness would be quite as clear, as strong. And I think that is that precision. Precision, yes, um, a good word. Is uh, wakes us up to that. Right. Yeah. Um, would you like to talk about your books now, or shall I come back to that? Um, um, I, I, what do you want me to say about them? Well, I, I mean, I love all of them, but I particularly, you know, the the I first got to know you by reading your pranayama books. I think uh-huh. I had read those books before I even met you. Mm-hmm at a yoga journal conference a gazillion years ago. Um, and I feel like they've informed many of us about uh, how to practice, even if some of the pranayama techniques vary just a little bit, depending upon the school we come from. Yeah, that's an Iyengar book, essentially. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that was based on my, 
what I learned from Manuso and, and a lot from Ramanan too. Mm. And uh, yeah, I owe it all. I know. I think I, in the, in the front of the book, I said, all the mistakes are mine, all the good things come to my teachers, which is the way you're supposed to do it when you write a book yes. like that. And um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I soften things up maybe a little bit, but um, yeah, the, the first book uh, was well received. I don't, I'm not sure the second book was quite as, as, mm. as, as quite, quite as well received as the first one. But what I really appreciate about both of them, uh, and maybe increasingly into the second, is this quality that you present as the pranayama practice as an inquiry into self in the moment. And I have had few pranayama teachers who stated that so clearly. And, and for me, that piece that I totally got from you, both in class and in these, via these books, uh, just invites a, a state of uh, meditative inquiry that I feel like yoga is really all about. Yeah, it's unfortunate the pranayama is a little bit outside the pale. I mean, um, the niche the niche I, I chose for my for my specialty was not, not very not very well um, received among the, the the general population. I had a guy who come to class one time. He said that was a good class, but do we have to do all that breathing at the end? <laughs> And I said, yes, you have to do all the breathing at the end. You never came back. Um, but I really feel that pranayama is, is uh, well, breathing, let's put it that way. Let's, let's leave out pranayama entirely. Is, is just a really important part of your life. Mm. And, I, you know, I, I don't leave, the, I don't leave the, the house in the morning until after I've, I've done a pranayama practice mm. of some sort. It's pretty, it's pretty simple right now. But, you know, this, you've got a, 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 it, your breathing brings you to yourself. And I think it's really important be with yourself during the day as you go you go about your business mm -hmm. so you're suggesting that gee for some reason our culture really is much more interested in in asana than in prana absolutely no, <laughs> you know that i do know that <laughs> i mean americans want americans want to see americans want action mm -hmm. they want to see improvement they want to see something happening they want something they want to return on their investment or their effort and with pranayama with breathing, let's say, it, it doesn't happen that way. It, it, it's a, you know, it's a spiral. You go uh, up and down, back and forth. And, you know, it's it's not a very good icebreaker at parties, you know, at least, you get, <laughs> at least when you do an icebreaker, you say, you want to see me touch my toes? But you can't really say, you want to see me breathe? <laughs> I had a, my next door neighbor, who's been my neighbor for many years, is a, a writes for a UC science something or another. And I was going to a, uh, a workshop one time and he, he says, um, uh, where are you going? I said, I'm going to teach pranayama class. He says, what's that? And I said, breathing. He said, don't they already know how to breathe? <laughs> so uh -uh. it's, it's not really well understood. And, and, and the, the benefits of it aren't really well understood either. Yeah, I, I actually thought when we had this sort of surge of interest in the vagus nerve and trauma and how to heal from trauma, I thought, oh, maybe this pranayama practice yeah. will start to be a little yeah. more mainstream. Yeah. Well, that really hasn't happened. Has well, it? the thing with that is you gotta, you gotta do it the right way. True that. If you, if you, if you breathe, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the practices, a lot of the, um, I, I used to review videos for Yoga Journal. Mm -hmm. I had had the one time I had the lo, mo, most videos in the, in the immediate parsec. I had videos everywhere. Mm -hmm from yoga journal. And what I saw on those, on those videos is that they always dump, jumped into the deep, deep end. This is pranayama and you, you, and all the this stuff. yeah, exactly. Or no, uh, Bastrika. Bastrika. Yeah. And you know, that that's fine, but not to begin. Mm -hmm. You have to start out at a re you know, you have to walk before you can run right? mm -hmm. or crawl before you can walk. Mm -hmm. So you have to get, you have to know yourself as a breather before you can start doing all the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. And that takes time. Yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no schedule. It just depends on the person, the intensity, the practice, that kind of stuff. What else is happening in your life? Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, it gets boring after a while if you're not, if you're not, if you're not really interested in what, in, in yes. doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, so I used to call it the mule work, mm. you know, and it's just, it's just, it's just got to keep plugging along until you, until something, until something hits. Mm. I just remember during the pandemic, and I was teaching a, just a weekly pranayama meditation class, and I, I took away all of the holds, the pauses. We never did Bastrika. We never did Kapalabhati because I just, you know, all of our nervous systems were at this level of, ah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was both, uh, what do you call it, shakshin, you know, just witnessing. Yeah, witnessing, yeah. Maybe three-part breath. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear God. I used to teach at this uh, school in the South Bay. I'm not going to name it. Mm-hmm. And the teacher, uh, the, the, the head of the school, always wanted me to teach the big stuff. Mm-hmm. I'd go in there and I'd look around the room and I'd say, but they're not ready for the big stuff. Yeah. You know, they're ready for the little stuff. Yeah. And then I, I didn't get invited back there much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you this. Do, when you say the big stuff, uh, I feel like in all forms of yoga, and, and by that I mean even yamas and niyamas, but certainly asana, pranayama, and, and the sitting practices, is that I feel like we we need to start simple and then we evolve into Absolutely. the big. And what I'm noticing is that I, I'm more interested in the simpler, simpler again. You, you have to go back to the simple every now and then. Oh, I, th- I thought I was going to stay here for the rest, for the duration. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you could do that. I mean, yes, that's exactly what I'm what I'm doing now. Hmm. I don't I don't really do any nasal stuff or anything like that. I'm just watching my breath mostly. Me too. But I'm doing I'm doing certain different patterns, hmm. and I'm just being very attentive to the way I'm to the way I'm breathing because it's a, it's an expression of who you are. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. And it's it, but but you're so close to it that you don't really. You don't really get it right away until you really look at it for a while, and it, and you know the older I've gotten, um, the more the more I the more I can see of myself, and you know it's, it's not always a pleasant picture, but you've got to go through that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like the breath, as I'm able to connect to the breath when, <clears throat> so let's say I get angry at that person who cut me off while mm-hmm. I was driving. Yeah. Does that ever happen? No, you're past that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I mean, it's it really does. I can take a couple of conscious breaths and. What I do is I say, on. "How do I do that?" Mm. You know, I say, "When when do I do that?" And I, I you know, and then I realize, you know, everybody does. We all do. That. All of them, yeah. yeah. Um, I yeah. was going to say something, and I forgot. I forgot. It'll come back. Um, yeah, it'll come back tomorrow, probably. <laughs> At three a.m. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, just on that note of, um, you know, how things evolve, um, you know, you and I have had a discussion about the, the stages, the ashram of, of life, of yoga. Oh, oh okay. Brahmacharya and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how have you seen your practice change based on the needs of where you were in your life? Wow. That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. You could go on for a while on this. <laughs> or, or not go on at all. Um, okay. Um, well, of, of course, uh, to, to, whenever you start a, a practice like this, you're a student. Yes. And, you know, you're sort of at, at the mercy of your teacher if, mm. you, if you really have a good teacher. Mm. And that's the main thing. You've got to find the right teacher. and You've got to, you've got to put your trust in that teacher. Mm. To me, it's, it's, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't, in, in the old days, let me put it that way, it didn't help to hop around. <laughs> um, I, I found one teacher that I liked, and I, and I stuck with that one mm-hmm. teacher. And I thought that was, I thought that was a, for me, that was the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, as we were talking earlier, um, after a while, you know, you want to, you want to, you want to spread your wings mm-hmm. and fly a little bit. So, I mean, I guess that's the second stage when you when you leave the uh, the, the studentship and you become a little bit more of your own person. Um, what else? Well, I'm thinking, and especially for somebody like you who actually married and had a child. Yeah. No, I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that changes your life. You've got to provide. You've got to look <laughs> after. A lot of energy goes there. How did you stay with your practice? And how did the practice evolve based on how your life was shifting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, my wife goes to a psychic <laughs> weekly. And we don't talk about that. <laughs> I wonder why. But seriously, um, he's, a, he's a family friend as well. And uh, one time I, I, I um, helped him break up a sidewalk. It's a long story. But he gave me a free session. And so as not to insult him, I went. And he put me, he gave me a crystal. And this is, you know, and, he, uh, and we were talking about my, my wife was pregnant at the time. And he, and he, he said, when, you, when your child is born, the guru will awaken. And I thought, you are crazy. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, having a child is a, is a, is a, is a learning experience of, of the of the highest degree mm. for me it was anyway because uh you tr- uh, for me what i learned was uh you you, you recreate your parents in, in the face of your child mm. you say don't do that and you say to yourself but why <laughs> and where'd that come from <laughs> yeah so um 
I mean, it was a very, it was a very, it, it was and has been and still is a very enlightening experience. Mm. <laughs> and so do you feel like the practice has somehow given you that ability to say, wait, how do I do this? Where is this coming from? Not to create, the, not to recreate the, the, the mistakes of the past. Because yeah. it makes, it makes, the practice makes one, I'm not saying me, but one more aware of oneself. Mm-hmm. And the, where these, where these ideas are coming from, uh, particularly now at, at my age, I, I hate to keep saying that, but I really, be, I'm really beginning to see some of the, some of the, um, some of the curiosities in, 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 in my background and my life, the way I think about things. And it, it's, it's very, it's very revealing. And sometimes it's not, it's not very, it's, it's not very um, reassuring, but, but it could, it's very revealing to see why you, how, how, how the, your earliest years in life with your parents, how, how deeply they affected you and, and how much and continue to and continue to over, over time. Exactly. I always vowed, I, you know, my parents are fine people. I, uh, they were typical older parents. They never, you weren't friends with your parents years ago, you know, That's right. and uh, they were fine parents, but, um, you know, um, they taught me things that, that nature nurture was complete, op- complete, uh, opposite to my nature mm. you know they, they didn't really they didn't really look at me as a, as a separate human being they just you know they just brought me along with the, the, the exactly the same way that they were brought along mm. so um you know i mean this is the way they were and i'm not blaming them for it but um i think i think you know when you have a child as i discovered you have to look at that child as, as a separate person and and, and respect that her, the differences and encourage the the strengths that you see that you see that you seem to see and what's the other right. yeah, you never know well i just feel like that so mirrors the pathway of the yoga teacher because yeah. again we imitate point. our yeah, teachers yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. for so many years and we're just teaching what is the right thing to teach yeah. as opposed to seeing our students mm-hmm. and having them find their way yeah. in this practice that we're guiding along but um, that's the mark of a true guru <laughs> to get rid of the, get rid of, you, you know, the story about Peter Stereos and, and, oh, yeah. and uh, what's his name? Um, you know, um, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. Him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that. Peter was this, with this, you know, what's his name? Um, to Shandor. Shandor. Yes. Shandor. Peter was Shandor's right hand person for years. Yeah. And then one day Shandor said, you're done. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, and by the way, don't teach anything I taught you. Wow. And you know, that was it. And Peter went out on his own. He's, you know, he's, he's striving right now, obviously. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, he's that's a thoughtful uh, man. Yeah. That's, 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 you know, that's a good example of what, what a guru really is supposed to do when you're ready. You're gone. You're on your own. Yeah. Find your own way. Yeah. As your daughter is doing, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> She's the sweet one. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, I don't know, maybe some, most of the yoga books say we've got the first 25 years, then 25 to 50, and then we have the 50 to 75, which you're... Vanaprastha. You, Vanaprastha. Yeah, which you are now on the other side. So can you talk about that? Because I'm still in that era. Well, you, that's a, it's a days of retirement. Uh, when you go, Vana, forest. Yeah. You, you retire to the forest, you bring your wife along is optional. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you, you begin the study. And what you're studying for, of course, is sun, to be a sannyasa, to, to, to let it all, to put it all behind. I, I, I don't know that I'm going to go that quite that far. I'm, I'm, I like the forest and uh, I like my wife and my daughter. So, um, but, um, I, you know, I can see yoga, you know, is, the old yoga was a, a emphasis on the self separate from the world. Mm. But I think the new yoga, the modern yoga, more, the more modern yoga is, is emphasis on the self in relationship to the world. Mm-hmm. You want to go, you want to experience life to the fullest, I think. And that's what yoga helps you to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm going to, I mean, this is me looking at you from the outside. And mm-hmm. I've only known you really for what, seven years now. Um, is that all? So maybe eight. Seems like I've known you for all my life. Oh, thank you. Um, 
uh, well, two things come up. Uh, one is um, I've I have watched, for example, your books, and on the rare occasions when I get to come to your class as a student, um, I feel like there's more and more depth of philosophy that is completely interwoven with whatever it is we're doing, we are doing in your class, in your presence, uh, whether that's asana or pranayama. And I feel like that is, you know, do you enjoy? Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm, well, I just feel like that is, I'm imagining that has become more possible, more interesting than when you were busy with a teenager, for example. You, you were in relation to students, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Yeah, no, how you, just when you're having, guiding us through something, and even if it's an interesting sort of translation, very specific translation of a word, and how that matters and connects to what we're doing. Yeah, well, I, there has to be a balance with, 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 with regular mm -hmm. students, you know. <laughs> they're, not, they're not terribly interested in, in, a, in a, a philosophical lecture, but they are interested. It, it, it interests them to hear something of the background of, mm -hmm. of, of the names of the poses or, mm -hmm. you know, what, what this is related to. So I try to keep it fairly lighthearted and, um, you do it well. Thank you very much. <laughs> but your books, the later books are in a word more philosophical, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I, you know, that's, that's, um, I try to write for the average student. I, I, I'm not writing academic stuff. Hmm. So it's, 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 I, I, I do a lot of research for the books. And, um, and then I try to write it in a way that that has some humor and, you know, and, um, it, 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 it brings everything in, in down to earth where people can read it and fairly, fairly well understand without having a it's dictionary. It's relatable. Yeah. It's relatable. Very good. Thank you. You're doing a better interview than I am. <laughs> um, so the other one piece that I want to get into, uh, in terms of these stages is what, what about this idea of karma? I, I've, I keep, I've been saying to my students lately, you know, I, one of the big lessons of yoga is karma in the sense that whatever I do now, I'm going to feel it later <laughs> if I'm paying attention and whether that's, you know, going too deep in a pose or gee, I shouldn't have yeah. eaten so much last night yeah. or, you know, all the things. And I feel like our understanding uh, gets subtler over the years. I, I, I sort of feel like for me, and this is more in the last, I'm going to say 15, 20 years yeah. of practice, um, is that I feel more quickly and more um, sensitively what my actions are doing in the moment. That makes sense. And I feel like on good days, <laughs> I can manage and urge before it becomes an action. Yeah. And so like you so often say that I've stolen, who am I? Yeah. Well, I've <laughs> um, stolen that myself. <laughs> yes. It's, I know we didn't make it up. Uh, but, but I feel like that's a, a really deep learning that we can learn from, oh, grounding the inner border of the big toe and pausing after an inhale. And yeah. like, why did I get angry yeah. in that moment? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that to me has been especially uh, prevalent in my, you know, from 50 on, let's say. Yeah. When do you get to be 70? Well, I can't wait. Tell me all about it. <laughs> what to expect? Um, when I turned 70, which was six years ago now, um, I, I, I realized that I, that, I, that, I, that I was still 13 years old in certain, certain respects and that um, I hadn't really lived properly or lived fully, I should say, mm. up until that point. And so I made, a, uh, I made a very conscious decision at that point to find out what it means to live fully. You know, we have these death cafes mm -hmm. at, um, at the, the Nest now, they're, uh, Leslie's leading them. Mm -hmm. The uh, Nest is our local yoga yeah. studio. And Leslie Howard is a marvelous teacher. Anyway, um, I, I was thinking we should have a life cafe mm -hmm. and talk about what it means to be alive. Mm. And I, I, I suggested to Leslie, she, she didn't really get, pick up on it, but it's, it's, really, it's really important to find out for me, again, what it is that I'm doing. I said, you know, some, I, I do things that I'm, uh, now that um, I'm not quite sure why I'm doing them anymore. And I, 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 I have to sit back and say, why are you doing this? What is it, what, what, what is, how is this helping you along the way? And, and so what I'm saying is when I turned 70, 
I, I needed, I knew that I was nearing the end of my life. The average life expectancy of a Caucasian in this country is about 77. And I, I thought, you know, before I die, I want to live one day fully as myself, mm. whatever that means. Mm. And so I started, <laughs> I had to wait till I was 70 to do that, I guess. But I really wanted to find out what it really means to be fully alive. Mm. And I'll let you know when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do think that's the point of the death cafe, isn't it? Is, Pardon me? It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's the same thing about life, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, the death cafes are pretty interesting. The mm -hmm. People really become very vulnerable and very revelatory when they, when they get among, among people who talk about the same very delicate subject. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a, a whole group of new movement. books. Yeah, uh, yeah a whole yeah, movement, movement about, yeah. I guess, because us boomers are at a certain point. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, really. Yeah, needing a little boomers. guidance on it. <laughs> um, anything else you'd like to share? about you, about yoga, about being fully alive for 24 hours? I'll let you know. We'll do a, we'll do a follow up when I, can, when I become fully alive. Well, when you've got it. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much for having me. It was, a lot, it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you. Oh, should I do a poem? Oh, and let's do the poem. Um, the armadillo stopped the P in the middle of the road. He never saw the SUV that never even slowed. <laughs> We really hate to moralize about the episode, but as you see, it's most unwise to piddle in the road. <laughs> Would you read it one more time? Say it up. All right. From memory. The art of the, uh, this is the, um, this is the armadillo. The armadillo stopped to pee in the middle of the road. He never saw the SUV who never even slowed. <laughs> we hate, we really hate to moralize about this episode, but as you see, it's most unwise to piddle in the road. <laughs> That is The Armadillo by Richard Rosen. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you to our entire team behind the scenes at GLOW. I'm so grateful for your care and commitment to serving our members around the world. Thank you to our teachers for so beautifully sharing your gifts and talents. I'm also grateful to our lovely community of GLOW members. You've supported us since 2008, and because of you, we get to continue to do the work we love. It's the combined support of our team, our teachers, and our community that grants me the privilege to continue to bring you the GLOW podcast. Thank you to Lee Schneider at Red Cub Agency for production support. And the beautiful music you're hearing now is by Carrie Rodriguez and her husband, Luke Jacobs. And remember, take care of yourself because our world needs you. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. You can find the GLOW podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or glo.com slash podcast, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. I'm Derek Mills.